Hello and welcome back to another episode of Not Overthinking. Tamor, how are you doing today? I'm actually doing pretty well. You're doing pretty well? I'm doing pretty first, well. First time I've like, heard this in a long time. time. Yeah, I had a, believe it or not, I had a 10 minute morning poo today. What happened? 10 minutes. How, why, why only 10 minutes? I don't know. I guess it's just like, look, I'm not going to go into like loads of detail, but yeah, like the the issue previously has been that like there's multiple batches okay and they're usually spaced out like five to ten minutes apart and so that's yeah. why it ends up like last lasting 30 40 minutes so the issue is that you relieve yourself and then you wait for your rectum to refill and then i don't think there's you refilling. Repeat. i mean i'm no, i'm not as i'm not a doctor but i don't think there's refilling okay but anyway there's basically there's multiple batches yeah. that are normally spread out yeah and today they were less spread out Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, so have you been trying anything for the bowels? I tried taking some psyllium. Okay, how's that going? Psyllium, psyllium husk. husk. Yeah. Um I tried it for like a week or something. I didn't really do anything. Okay. Yeah. Have you tried taking a probi probiotic, prebiotic, all that jazz? Yeah, a little bit. We've got the Simprove stuff that my friend has sold me. <laughs> you know Simprove? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's have a new probiotic that I'm gonna stop taking. Apparently it's work. sick. Yeah. Right. It's just like a tablet, so you don't have to worry about it. Huh. But yeah, I'm pretty pleased about that. And then today should be a fun day. I've got a coffee I got a breakfast meeting, got a lunch meeting, date night with the lady later on. Oh man. Yeah. Who's the who's the breakfast meeting with? Breakfast meeting is with a guy who I met at a friend's wedding in May. Um but he seems like he might be a good fit for a role that we're hiring for. So it's like Ooh, a it's catch like up a... plus let's, you know, talk business oh. kind of meeting. Does he know that he's going to be? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty upfront about it. Uh, nice. Who's the lunch meeting with? Lunch meeting is with someone else who we are trying to hire for that role. Yeah. He's spending a lot of time doing hiring these days. It's not that much. Yeah. Isn't that the main job of CEO though? Like hiring, hiring and vision uh, or something like that. Depends how much you need to hire, I think. Yeah, I spend some time doing hiring these days. Um, I've definitely spent more time in, in previous periods. But now there's like basically one role that I'm hiring for. What's the role you're hiring for? Head of business operations. The hell does that mean? <laughs> uh, basically someone who can, you know, we're, we're like 28 people today. We'll be like 50 people by the end of next year. And as we scale... We need someone who can make sure the internal machine is operating smoothly, and this you know, and this person can be like a force multiplier for everyone else in the company to be able to work really effectively. Now you're thinking, huh, that sounds all right, but that sounds really vague and abstract, right? No, I was thinking, uh, I, I was thinking, oh, biz ops rather than biz dev. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So basically. You know, this person will be in charge of various things that are like foundational pieces that help everyone else work better. Okay, so like one, tracking your OKRs and KPIs and all that jazz. Yeah, one is like internal sort of metrics, tracking, keeping teams accountable, yep. to like filling in their numbers or whatever. It's like make sure the data is there and a good quality. Yep. Um, one thing is just, is like data infrastructure and BI. BI means business intelligence. So just like making sure that like, if someone on the sales team wants to see like, hey, how many, how many, how much revenue did we close over the last six months, you know, split out by, by like inbound versus outbound leads, you know, like that should be accessible to anyone really, really easily. Okay. But it takes a bunch of like infrastructure to set that up. And so we need someone to like own that side. Um, and then there's some like sort of finance and FP&A stuff of like making sure we're not spending money badly, making sure we're saving money where we can, making sure we have like good financial forecasts into the future that we can rely on, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, then just like general sort of special projects as they arise. Um, hmm. Yeah, Sounds like a lot of what our general manager does. Flash is supposed to do. Yeah, it's kind of that sort of role. Like, yeah. But I guess when you have a bigger team, you would have. So, so it sounds like this guy is not. Or girl. Or girl. Thank you. Um, is not doing lots of sort of people one on one type stuff. It's mostly about no. like building the systems and the infrastructure to allow 
everyone else's to, to keep on track with things and keep the business aligned. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Why do you need a head of biz ops at this stage? Like as opposed to like at previous stages or? Yeah, so we've had, um, we used to have a head of biz ops. Uh, he left to start his own company a few months ago. Um, and now we have like a more junior person doing the biz ops role. Um, and you know, he's doing, he's doing a good job, but we're kind of figuring everything out for the first time. Yeah. And you know, he's like a, he's like a smart, like somewhat technical guy. So like we can't figure things out, but, uh, yeah, I think as we like scale to like 50 ish people and beyond, you kind of want someone who's seen that journey before who can like foresee what's what stuff you're going to run into and like set things up the right way today so that every like three months we're not like oh shit we need we like set that up wrong and then we need to do this and stuff like that hmm what's your take on the whole like hire junior people and let them learn because it's not that hard to learn stuff versus hire experienced people who are way more expensive but and who have done the thing before but they have done the thing before and like the value of experience uh yeah i think like i think there's an in-between basically that we usually try and go for which is someone who has the experience basically there's like different types of senior people there's like a kind of senior person who wants to look at dashboards all day and that's the kind of senior person we don't want to get we want like senior people who can still get their hands dirty can still like write an sql query you know to like do some yeah basically we at the moment for like this role and for you know some other roles that we'll probably be hiring for we need like experienced senior people who are also still very strong ics ic meaning an individual contributor um we don't really need a managerial class of pure managers yet we do have like one or two people like that you know, yeah but like for yeah we don't we don't need that in every function at the moment we need like strong ICs who have ideally like seen things before and, and have the experience and could then like be great managers as their team grows under them. Okay, cool. So how are you feeling about all the causal stuff these days? Yeah, I think I'm feeling pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I think we're in a good spot. Got some really cool product stuff coming soon. Yeah, I'm really excited for what we're... fixing the bugs. Yeah. <laughs> now we're doing some, we're making some big moves in Q1. Q1, Q2, going to be huge. Can you give our listeners a sneak peek of any of these big moves? Um, yeah. I So my main agenda is like um, our self-serve plan. So, you know, we have um, we have a sales team who we now have kind of a, a sort of senior person leading that uh, where we sell these sort of annual contracts to people. Hmm. And um, yeah, I think we have like a, good sense of how that's meant to work there's lots of things we need to improve obviously um and like we know what those are and this chap who's coming in to lead the sales team is gonna is gonna figure that out um but the other thing we also want to do is grow our self-serve customers so you know if you run if you're ali abdal limited or if you're angus parker of the general manager of ali abdal limited you're in charge of various things right you're in charge of like um, you know, you manage a bunch of people, you need to like figure out the finance side of things, whatever legal, you know, whatever like operation stuff, like it's, it's in, in your plate and your on your plate. And, you know, part of what this kind of person would need to do in a small business is have some kind of financial model and forecasts and be able to look at the numbers and see like, Hey, are we like, you know, are we on, on track to hit our goals, you know, or whatever, or like, yeah. are we wasting hey, money on that would be like game random shit? We had one of those financial models. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we want Causal to be the kind of product that a non, a non, you know, a smart analytical, but like non-finance person can like pick up and get value from quite quickly. Um, and then like figure out how to use, uh, and then set up these like models and stuff. So we, you know, um, I think right now the big issue is that the time to value is quite high. You know, you have to like get over the learning curve. You have to learn all the stuff and then hopefully it clicks and then you're like, oh, wow, this is actually pretty cool. And then you spend a bunch of time in the mm -hmm. product. But if you just like sign up, you know, you've got a million other things going on. You've got like 15 minutes in which you think, oh, I'll just like mess around with this tool or something. Um, yeah, right now, like it's hard for you to get that value very quickly. Uh, and so I think the big unlock for the self-serve for us is going to be um, 
what we're calling one-click reporting. So, you know, Causal is uh, really good at what we call modeling. So when you want to write formulas and stuff like that in a nicer way than spreadsheets and then, you know, to do calculations and to run scenarios, whatever. Um, that's all That's all well and good and that's important. Um, but what, what's actually, you know, pretty low-hanging fruit that is still extremely valuable for people is like, hey, just like show me my historical numbers from the last 12 months, you know? Um, and I, yeah, I would guess like most CEOs of like tech-ish companies um, would not really know like how much money, like what their expenses are, <laughs> or, like how much money they're spending on like software, I whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and part, I think part of the reason is that it's just like really annoying to get those answers because you have to log into QuickBooks Online or Zero. You have to like do a bunch of clicking around. It's just like, it's just not good. And so, um, yeah, basically, I think the big unlock for us is going to be, hey, if someone like you or Angus signs up, um, within like two minutes, you'll be able to connect your accounting system, QuickBooks or, or Xero, uh, and your HR system. What do you guys use for that? Bob. Oh, yeah. Hi, Bob. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you'll be able to connect that up. Um, and then within, yeah, within like two minutes, we will, we will have like pre-built sort of template that populates with your live data from your actual business. And so within two minutes, you can see like, oh, wow, okay. Um, no way. That's how much we've been spending on salaries. <laughs> how, why are we spending so much on contractors? You know, like you'll be able to see that like within two minutes. And then that's like, you know, that's like a big chunk of value. That's like, oh, wow, okay, my data's in here. Now I'm motivated to like learn this tool mm. and see what I can do next. And then you like start tweaking some yeah. assumptions and see like some forecasts and make it more sophisticated. And that's a good thesis. That's the thesis. Good thesis. If I had something like that, I'd be like overjoyed. Mm. I would immediately be like, right, pricing. Let me sign up for the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like... yeah. And so the you know the self serve plan is um, is two hundred and fifty dollars a month, month to month contract. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think it's I think it's just a very. I might be deal. a bit like uh, two fifty a month. Really? Yeah. Do you spend. Look, the thing is, right, people like you, mm -hmm. small businesses, spend one to $2,000 a month on sort of outsourced CFO type people to basically provide the domain expertise to like pull in the data from QuickBooks. And, and turn it into a huge turn, ass Excel file. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they often turn it into a huge ass Excel file, which you're then like, oh man, like, screw this. I'm not like messing around with this huge ass Excel file. Yeah. I'll just like rely on this guy yeah. to once a month send me a PDF or something, right? Yes. Currently I rely on that guy and our accountants to send us management accounts each month where I look at all the numbers and be like, oh, we're spending that much on software. And then I scroll yeah. down, scroll down, scroll down, spend half an hour reading this thing. And then I look at the graphs at the bottom and I'm like, oh, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, you know, we kind of, you know, there, there obviously is value to having some like experienced finance person like advising you on stuff but i don't think the reporting and forecasting piece I, you know we want to kind of make that reporting and forecasting piece very easy so you're, so you're saying that i could literally have a forecast for 2023 that's like okay we want to be we're we know we've been spending 10k a month on software for the last 12 months yeah we want to ideally reduce that to i don't know 8k so let's like do a time series yeah, yeah, yeah. and then every month it will actually put in our actual data so I don't have to like manually update anything. Correct. And yeah. it will tell me what the difference is between what our forecast was and what our actual thing was. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. No. How do people do that at the moment? Um, it, you know, most small businesses are not using any kind of tool um, because really the, the tools that are out there, they are really built for slightly bigger businesses. They're built for like 100 plus headcount businesses oh. uh, typically. Um, and so, yeah, most like SMBs, small, medium businesses, uh, are just doing this manually in Excel and Google Sheets, you know, like if they're, if they have the resources, then every month, some, some poor sod is like logging into QuickBooks, exporting some CSV, yeah. putting it into like some tab of the Excel thing, yeah. feeding the numbers into like the actual financial you know, P&L tab yeah. or whatever. Um, you'll probably have like different versions floating around yep. for like the forecast versus the actuals mm. you know if you want to like run scenarios again you probably just create a new duplicate your excel file change the numbers mm. you know all this kind of stuff um 
And yeah, it's just a bit of a shit show. And it means that people like you, because it's such a shit show, just don't look at the numbers. Yeah. Because it's like... And then at the end of the year, when I make my how much money I earned this video, then I think, what the hell? (laughs) How did we what? (laughs) What? (laughs) Why did no one tell me any of this? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I have an existential crisis. <laughs> yeah, it's mental. Yeah, yeah exactly. and I do a lot of journaling to be like, how are we? How did we make so little, and how do we spend so much? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then my coach tells me that like, you know, it's fine to spend little and make much because of stuff, but w- it should never come as a surprise. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it came as like as a huge surprise. Right, right. And yeah, so the, you know, these are some of these are the problems we're trying to solve. And you know, I think like, you know, folks like you, you know, good men like you, you want to. You also want to like be transparent with the company about what's going on, right? Like you want people to know that like, hey, these are our profit margins. Oh, hey, this is how much money we made last month. Oh, hey, this thing, you know, growth is going down or like growth is going up. And, you know, you want people to know these things um, and to like be, yeah, just like thinking about the business and what matters to the business rather than just thinking about like their like very that's, narrow that's role, a right? Point. And so... That is a good point. Again, like the sh- the sh- the shit show set up with Excel files just means that, like, I mean, it's too much faff for you, the CEO, or whatever you you are these days. It's too much faff for you to like see the numbers. What are the chances that anyone else in the business is going to like remotely have a clue about this Excel stuff, even if you do send it to them? Yeah. And so, you know, the beauty of web based software is that you you guys can you can just have like causal dashboard of like the important stuff yeah screenshot it once a month chuck it in slack here's a link if anyone wants to take yeah it. yeah live link people can be and yeah. people can like play around with some of the assumptions if they want and um yeah you can embed it in notion it actually looks really good embedded into notion causal charts yeah mm. it looks like super native nice um yeah so you know lots of lots of benefits to the causal way yep love it i'm sold yeah, one of the things that I um, don't think we really kind of talked about this particularly because of why love hurts. Um, but yeah, that was just, just a, I had such a huge shock when we were adding up our numbers for the how much money I had oh, yeah. here. And Tintin, who's my YouTube buddy, was the one adding adding the numbers up. And he was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really surprised that like, it's only at the end in December 2022 when we're yeah. making this video that where <laughs> you fa- finally like seem to realize how much money the business has actually made, how much money we're actually spending. And I was like, yes. Like, <laughs> I know it seems absurd <laughs> that we're only now figuring this yeah. out, but there just previously was just no incentive to actually run the numbers. Mm. And especially from, from my end, there was no incentive to actually look at the numbers and really care about them. Yeah, I guess Whereas, if you think, oh, yeah. profitable, so like, it's not like we're running out of money. Yeah. Hopefully, like, if, yeah. if you get that wrong next year, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. And it's like now that we've, uh, we're like, all right, cool, like we're going to talk about the 14 different income streams we have. Hang on, this is this is added up today, like whatever million. This doesn't seem right. Like my my mental model for how much money I think we have is not. What, oh, okay, so what's yeah, what's yeah. going on there? And it's like, oh, actually, the way we do our accounting based on whether people when people signed up for our YouTuber Academy mm-hmm. and whether they had a payment plan makes a difference because sometimes that money hits our account a few months later. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it doesn't hit our account at all if they default on their payment plan. Yeah. <laughs> and so the numbers that we think we're making is not the number we're actually making. Yeah. And so this number is one of the, and all of this kind of stuff that suddenly just yeah. came to the forefront when I was sitting there with a Google sheet for like yeah. three hours yeah, yeah, to be yeah, like, yeah. what the hell are all these numbers? Why is the, why are we spending so much on contractors? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why are we spending so much on salaries? Like yeah. all of these things. Yeah, exactly. Like, software, ten k a month. Like what the hell? What the hell are we spending ten k a month on? You yeah. know that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think the um the sort of the second order effect of like looking at the numbers and like trying to build a model or a forecast for your business is that you you then also like start asking like the right questions. Mm. Like you know you like before this you might not have been aware that like oh crap, like 5% of people don't end up paying us for the YouTuber Academy. They just like don't pay. And like, if you look at it, you know, it's only by looking at the numbers and saying like, hey, that doesn't really add up. What's going on there? Then you're like, oh shit, like 5% of people don't pay. A, we should figure that out because we're losing out on like, I don't know, 50, 100K or something a year. Um, and B, like that should definitely be part of our forecast because <laughs> like we're losing out 50, 100K a year that, we're not, that we don't know about. And so, yeah, I think just the, the process of like, building a model or a forecast and like digging into the numbers, like seeing if they all make sense um, is like very good just for like actually understanding mm. stuff in the business that you might not otherwise have known. About. Yeah. Yeah. This is what my CEO coach says as well. He's like, look, every week you want to be reviewing your OKRs and KPIs yeah. as a CEO just to, just to see what's going on. And mm. then you want to take it up with your general manager if there's mm. any issues. And every month you want to be looking at your PL, <laughs> like really going through your PL and just being like, what's actually going on? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but 
at the moment. It, it's the, 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 there's this weird thing going on right now where, like, previously, so um, with previous businesses that I've I've run, we you know used to use like free agent and zero, and I would do I would do all of the reconciliation and accounting and stuff myself. Back when that, I was a, what does that entail? One man band. Oh, it's just like going like it automatically imports your bank transactions and it's yeah, just like yeah, looking yeah. through and just being like tagging them ta- software, 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 and it defaults. It creates rules and stuff over time. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that arduous. But when I had such a clear idea of what what our accounts were, yeah. I was doing reconciliation myself. It's like I just knew how much money we were making, yeah, how much yeah. money we were spending. Yeah, yeah. Whereas now we have like this accounting firm who sends us a PDF every month, and I don't even have like admin access to QuickBooks. So I log into QuickBooks and it's just like, your access is restricted. You can mm-hmm. just run these five reports. You don't have admin access to QuickBooks? Or, or like whatever access that allows me to go in and, and see like, what is the software that is in our software? Oh, oh has yeah. Has it all been categorized correctly? Right, yeah. And yeah. are we calling like a contractor expense that I know is a contractor expense, yeah. but because it had a weird name on the invoice, yeah, we're calling yeah, it yeah. software because why are we spending 10K a month on software? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things like that. Whereas right now I'd have to be like, okay, I guess I should talk to Angus. He'll talk to Dan. He'll yeah. talk to the accountants. He'll send yeah. us a PDF. He'll tell us like, well... Dot, and then it, it just seems like oh, it's only ten yeah, it's only yeah, ten yeah. month. It's yeah, not yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> if I can't log into I've QuickBooks myself, in two minutes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here's yeah, here's the other thing um, that Causal will help with. Once you see some numbers, like you see, oh, this like this thing looks higher or lower than I expect. You then need to like yeah, figure out like what's going on there, and you know the way to do that is by like seeing the list of transactions that allegedly make up that number yeah i was looking through those the other day on quickbooks online <laughs> yeah 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 exactly and that requires either like talking you know to dan angus whatever like multiple people to like so they they hear go and do it or you like going into quickbooks clicking around for like 10 minutes to find the right like list of transactions um yeah one of the big like value adds in causal is that when you um we don't have this today but we will have this in q1 um, the QuickBooks data integration will also have uh, will also let, let you drill down into transactions. And so when you see a number in causal, directly in causal, you can like double click into no that way. data number. Dude. It will show you a list of transactions. And, and then you can see like, oh shit, that one was really big. Or like, hey, that one shouldn't be there. Um, you know, this isn't, this isn't actually a contractor. Like, and then you can like get to Angus to sort it out or something. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I think just like closing that loop of like having excel files that aren't connected to live data uh and then like back and forth thing between like excel and quickbooks and the other excel for this other thing and, you mm-hmm. know all this kind of stuff just having it all in one place um just yeah. like reduces the faff and i think yeah well worth like 250 dollars a month mate hey, if only ftx had this <laughs> dude oh it's so <laughs> funny like, to I, QuickBooks. <laughs> yeah yeah i like last year so about a year ago um was when um, i chatted to one of the guys at, F- at ftx who was leading their ventures side of things oh dear. and they How dare um, you? and i was looking through my notes from like the meeting um and uh you know i was i was keen for them to become like users of course all not just like investors and so uh in my notes it uh, literally says, <laughs> doesn't care about the FP&A use case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I remember I was asking the guy, I was like, look, I, you know, the guy was kind of interested in the like probability stuff. He's like, oh yeah, we, we like build like small back of the envelope type models just, you know, to, yeah, just doing discussions and stuff like that. And the probability stuff would be really cool. And I was like, oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, we'd love, you know, it'd be great if you can just like use it self-serve for that. Um, but who does, who does like the financial modeling? Who does like the FP&A and the, and the finance stuff? You know, that's kind of a, the, the main use case for us. You know, you guys are like the right size. And yeah, you're just like, oh yeah, we don't really, uh, I, I can't remember exactly what he said. So I'm not going to like... Um, yeah, but basically he was like, him on, on yeah, air. basically he was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't really, yeah, we don't really care about the FBA use case. I mean, that, that, that was my, my nose was, was that they don't care about the FBA use case at all. <laughs> nice. That sounds like something you could leak to autism capital. <laughs> <laughs> Just in. Yeah. And like, I mean, usually on these kinds of things, like the guy I'm talking to might not be the right guy, but I'm usually like, hey, you know, who is the right guy? Can you introduce me to like the right, the right person for this thing? Um, and yeah, my notes aren't like super detailed, but yeah, but yeah <laughs> <nice. seems> like <laughs> that's funny. The right person for this thing. But I've I've had a couple of trips to uh, the Middle East in the last like month. Oh yeah. So I was in Sharjah uh, over the weekend, and then like two weeks ago, I was in Dubai. Nice. Um, Sharjah was my first paid gig. Really? Got paid to give a talk. Nice. It's great. How does like, that feel? Feels pretty good. I, I enjoy giving talks. Yeah. I, I would do it for free. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell anyone. Uh, but 
the fact that they pay and they'll like pay business class and nice, put, 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 you know, like five star hotel and like can you bring the videographer along and you're like well we can but can you bring the video over <laughs> it'll, 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 it'll cost you a bit more and they're like yeah okay cool fine all right all right <laughs> lads trip to Sharjah. um yeah so it's it's yeah it's really quite fun um it is objectively not worth it when i think about the numbers because the numbers are quite absurd and in isolation, it seems like the number is, is very absurd. They're like, oh my God, they're paying that much for a speaking gig. Yeah. But it's like the amount, the amount that I got paid yeah. for the speaking gig was sort of the equivalent to the amount for like a single YouTube sponsorship. Yeah. It takes me about 30 seconds of work to do a YouTube sponsorship. Yeah. This involved flying to a different country yeah. and coming back and like 72 hours of my life gone. Yeah. yeah. Which was still quite fun. But it's just like yeah. that. I, I only kind of clocked this after a while. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. This is actually not a great deal, even though it feels like a great deal. Yeah. On the surface, it seems absurd that you would, you'd get paid X amount for yeah. actually just giving a talk. Yeah, I think the thing is also, like, you know, business class flights, five-star hotel, etc. This It's still worse than <laughs> your normal standard of life. Is it worse, than, worse <laughs> yeah. than just being at home? Me sitting like, at home is better than a five-star hotel yeah. and business class flight, mate. Like, <laughs> yeah. know. You know? <laughs> so it's like, uh, yeah, you just... Yeah, it's like business class flight. Yeah, I can just sit there on this chair on my laptop and I can get some tomato juice yeah. on, the, on the hour every hour. Yeah. It's like, yeah. huh, how much would that cost to do in real life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like, it is, it, like yeah. it's obviously really cool compared to, like, if you have to fly, it's obviously, like, much yeah. cooler to do a business class or whatever. But it's still, I think, like, yeah. the the glamour of it, you know, we should, one shouldn't forget that actually if you're just sitting in your bedroom <laughs> you're, you have a better better than a business class flight going on right <laughs> yeah. now <laughs> i think that's one of those good like gratitude journal type things <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're like last weekend i was on a even a first class flight like right now right which cost like 10k or whatever it is and right now i'm having a better time <laughs> so um yeah so I spoke when i was in dubai i spoke to someone who um this personal finance youtuber who used to be a corporate lawyer her name's erica kohlberg and we ended up having a just chat, a chat over dinner and talking about like business finances. And yeah. this was when I was I realized that Erica was spending all this money. Oh, <laughs> I really? literally just realized this. Yeah. And we kind of went through and she was like explaining how her business model works and how they just use a load of um, like contractors in the Philippines and stuff and that kind of thing. And yeah. just like super interesting look at different ways of running what is essentially the same business of like content, making money through courses yeah, yeah. and feeding into content. Um, I think that would have been a that's a high high ROI conversation. So that that conversation plus this sort of me finally looking at the numbers and being like, oh my god, <laughs> yeah. has prompted lots of like internal <laughs> strife and journaling and all this kind of stuff. Journaling, <laughs> I love it. It's all about journaling, <gasps> man. It's like therapy, yeah, for broke people, <laughs> or whatever. Um, yeah, you had a rough week last week. You were really ill. I was really ill. Yeah, what well, I had the flu. It's weird. I think I, I caught you, something. I thought you were built different. I thought I was built different. Yeah, this was this was a bizarre experience. Um, I think I had probably caught something when I was when I was in Dubai. The old uh, what was it? Um, Middle Eastern M syncytial virus or something? No, like one mate. of the one of the COVID. I think you're not allowed to like say those 12. things. Not allowed to say those things. Okay, sorry. Uh, I caught something in Dubai. I think, and it was weird. Like last weekend, so so not this weekend gone, but weekend weekend before. I was literally in bed all day on all day on Saturday, and like in bed most of the day on Sunday, and. It was just like, for those like five or six days while, while I had this illness, I had like no energy. I had zero motivation to do anything. If you'd asked me, how's your mood? I would have said like, yeah, actually, damn, my mood is pretty low. Like, oh my God. Mm. Like, I'm so not used to yeah. having anything resembling a low mood. Yeah. And I'm so not used to have anything resembling low motivation and low energy. Yeah. That it was just like, oh my goodness. Like, I just, I just want to, just want to lie there watching video essays on YouTube. Right. <laughs> like, why the Lord of the Rings is a masterpiece and why the Hobbit sucks and how how they destroyed the Harry Potter franchise with Fantastic yeah. Beasts like half an hour video essay mate <laughs> all of this kind of stuff yeah. I was literally just in bed watching YouTube videos and sleeping all day mm. and I mentioned this to to Lucia and she was like yeah you know some, some people are just like this yeah. like this is just how, how some people are like like low energy and low motivation yeah and it gave me a level of empathy for some of the emails that I get from people that I just have never had before <laughs> When so what's, email, the, what, what's like the what, what was the condition was it like so you, it wasn't it wasn't so much that you cared about the physical ailment of like oh my throat hurts whatever you cared that like oh, i like can't be bothered to like do something useful or like mm. i don't want to like get up and yeah write an email or something yeah or even i don't want to get up and like actively do something recharging like oh, okay 
yeah, I don't want to get up and go for a walk. I don't want to get up and like play the guitar. I don't want to get up and even like just actively decide that yeah. I'm going to watch a movie that I haven't seen. I'm just going to be like, oh, okay, fine. Let's yeah. just sit on my desk, YouTube, like algorithm. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was bizarre. Because, because like normally I wake up in the mornings and I feel like pumped and I feel like excited and feel energized and like, yeah, yeah I can't yeah. wait to get started with work. Yeah, yeah. And this time I was just like, oh my God, like, what's the point? Yeah. Like, on my days, like, why, why, it's just, I'm just making YouTube videos. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I should have been a doctor. <laughs> yeah. I wish I was at a doctor's office right now. <laughs> writing yeah. discharge letters. Um, yeah, so all of those kind of things. And then it's like on Thursday, it was like, boom, magic wand waved. Suddenly I'm like, I'm back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's freaking go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, bit of a bit of an interesting experience. Basically wrote off five days of my life. And it was kind of annoying because in these five days, I had a couple of podcasts I was going to do. And I also had like, I was going to put loads of time into the book. Yeah. Because the deadline is like literally 10 days from now. You could have like laid in bed and done the book instead of the other thing, instead of the YouTube. Mm. But it was just like the mental energy yeah. it would require. Yeah. 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 It was like whatever, like brain fog, mental fatigue, yeah. like all this kind of stuff. Which I, I don't think I've ever experienced. But before. like, were you trying to resist it? Or like, did you just have like the write off and just like be like, okay, great. I'm just going to like watch some Netflix and have a good time for a few days. I was Feel vaguely like. trying to resist. I think that this was the problem. Like I didn't actually acknowledge the write off. Ah, really? So I'd like go into the into the studio room and sit on my desk and be like, right, I, should, I should do some book stuff. I was like, all right, get the dressing gown on. Being like, why, is, why is it so cold? Like, why is this fucking house so cold? I like, yeah. Yeah. God, I was like, all right, I'm going to bring a blanket here as well. I was like, all right, cool. Chapter four, all right. All right, motivation is a bit. Edits. I got this, yeah, yeah. motivation. Exactly, yeah. David Goggins. The obstacle, <laughs> like, the obstacle is the goal. <laughs> the obstacle is the way. Uh, the way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but good reference. <laughs> I, I should have listened to David Goggins' new audiobook. Yeah, yeah mate, David download. Goggins. Yeah, I've started yeah. to stick, I've started to stick. <laughs> there's a, the, I don't know, the, there's, a, there's a fun one that I actually do watch repeatedly on Instagram, where oh, it's yeah? like, well, what if his little clips where he's running, clips, he's like running. talking. So yeah. the other day, I got an email <laughs> from a listener saying that, doesn't feel motivated, doesn't want to work, doesn't feel like it can be consistent with this thing. And you know, back when I was young, I used to have this problem as well. And then I thought, what's going on with me? And I realized what it was. I was being a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's nothing to do with gender. <sighs> bitch is a state of mind. <laughs> Stay hard. <laughs> I was like, dude, <laughs> that's sick. <laughs> Oh, David Goggins. <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Can you, what's his like, what's his bio? If you can just briefly show him to the audience. Oh yeah, he's sick. Um, basically like super um, under thingy, underprivileged background, like lo loads of issues at home, etc. When he was a kid growing up, he's like black, half black and got lots of like racist abuse and all this kind of stuff growing up in a white area. Where do you, like in the US? In the US, yeah. Um, and then he ended up like just having load, like load of random ass jobs, becoming like super overweight, all this kind of stuff. And then he decided he wanted to be a Navy SEAL. And so he had goes through this entire like transformation, goes through like Navy SEAL training yeah. in, in his first book, Can't Hurt Me, which is genuinely sick. Audiobook in particular is very good um, because yeah, he they, they they have like discussions with the the ghostwriter <laughs> um, at the end of each chapter yeah. where he tells more stories. And it's just like exp like talking through how sort of intense and tough the whole Navy SEAL stuff was, mm. but then how he finds the mental fortitude to continue despite like broken arms and broken legs and like yeah. being bullied by the instructors and like yeah. all this kind of stuff. It's sick, yeah, it's really, really inspiring story. Um, I, hadn't really, I hadn't really seen any of his stuff other than just Captain Sinbad's parody. So like what- Prior to listening to the book and then I listened to the book and then I was like, all right, I'm sold on Goggins. To someone outside of the motivational speakers like mm. uh, industrial complex, like, What's his vibe versus, say, like a Tony Robinson, who's like... Tony Robbins. <laughs> is that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who's Tony yeah. Robinson? Is he the EDL yeah. guy? I've never heard of Tony Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the EDL guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear out of a little Google? Tommy Robinson is the EDL guy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Tony Robbins yep. versus Goggins. Like, what's, what's Goggins' vibe? Like, is it different to most of the other... Yeah. Dudes out there. Yeah. Okay. So I would say Tony Robbins vibe is like, you can look within and you can find the strength within yourself and come on, like, let's, let's do this together. Like, oh, you yeah. know, all the, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's very like, 
<laughs> Tony Robbins manage, like, like runs 5,000 person seminars yeah. where he's just got this incredible stage presence and manages to, yeah. to command a room of 5,000 yeah. people and get them all to be like wholesome and yeah. like huggy feely and touchy feely and yeah. like hugging and crying yeah, and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And David Goggins is like, like you're a bitch. <laughs> exactly. Be like, look, man, if you ain't got the motivation, you're just a little bitch. Like, <laughs> you got to realize that like <laughs> discipline is the only thing that matters. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I don't want to get out of bed. I say, Goggins, do you want to be mediocre all your life? <laughs> and then half an hour later, I decide, no, I'm not going to be mediocre. <laughs> so I get up. I go for a run with broken legs. I'm bleeding at the end of it. My wife is like, Goggins, what you doing? And I'm like, I ain't going to be mediocre. <laughs> that's the, that's Your impressions are getting really good, man. Do you Thank practice you. these? No, I don't. I should. <laughs> you do really good Andrew Tate as well. <laughs> Worryingly good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not going to bust that one out. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, I'm. Yeah, I'm going to listen to Goggins and I'll report back. But, um, yeah, I was telling you this the other, like yesterday. But I think like I think there's an IQ bell curve meme to be done about people like David Goggins and like Tony Robinson, where like Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Tony Robbins. <laughs> <It's like>, uh, <laughs> and Michael Phillips. <laughs> I'm actually not doing it. Up, <laughs> yeah, I know that's that, that's the funny part. <laughs> yeah, there's an IQ bell curve meme to be done where like the dim wit and the and the top wit are both like well the the, the dim wit is like oh my god like David Goggins like so motivational like yeah. you know I'm a little bit <laughs> and then the mid wit is like no like these guys are just like snake oil salesmen these motivational speakers like you know it doesn't work you know whatever just like complaining about how it's, it's not scientific or some bullshit like this right <laughs> and then the and then the smart the smart guy is actually like yeah fucking David Goggins bro yeah. like <laughs> I think I think Tony that's so Robinson. true. Yeah. <laughs> I did that one or something. Yeah, nice. <laughs> have you have you seen any of Hamza's videos? Because your 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 uh, little bit just now when you were doing the midwit was uncannily oh, how, really? how Hamza does Jeffrey as well. Who's Jeffrey? Oh, okay. So there's this there's this guy on YouTube called Hamza okay. who's absolutely exploded on the scene in the last like year or two. What's the, like, what scene? <laughs> the oh uh, the, the, like, the creator scene. Oh, okay, uh, okay. The YouTube scene in particular, kind of the masculinity scene. men's self improvement. Okay, kind yeah, of yeah, scene. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very light version of like most of the kind of extreme self-improvement, okay. like very, you know, wholesome, like, you know, top things that will make you a good man reading and like <laughs> going to the gym oh, and like okay, grooming yourself yeah. rather than like, you know, all of the other potentially yeah, yeah. problematic things someone might say. Yeah. Um, but he, he's, 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 he's got a really good, um, so he starts his, all his videos with um, a contrast. He's like, a contrast. Uh, and his, his videos will always start with like, let's say the video is something like how to be motivated. Yeah. Jeffrey is a no life loser who just sits there <laughs> playing video games. He like goes to his goes to his dorm room, he jacks off and then he plays video games and he jacks off again. And then Jeffrey's like blah 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 blah. Oh, you know, I don't want to be motivated. I don't want to be disciplined. I just, you know, people someone uh, someone should love me for who I am. Adonis. Adonis is a man. Adonis <laughs> is a superior man. Adonis does not play video games. Adonis recognizes that to be a man, he must go to the gym and lift heavy things. <laughs> and then he'll like transition to his A role where he's, he's wearing a bathrobe. Yeah. And he's just sort of like, and then, then, then does a monologue. Yeah. And um, will often be like, and you know, some people are going to be, some people are going to say to me, be like, oh, but Hamza, video <laughs> games, I, like video games are important. If I, you know, if I play for one hour a day, then it's going to be fine. I'm like, bro, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Video games are ruining your life. You can delete TikTok right now. So he does like yeah, all, yeah, all yeah. of that, all of that kind of nice. stuff. Nice. Um, but it's nice because he's the, the whole like contrast between yeah, yeah. Jeffrey and Adonis. Yeah, yeah. Um, is it always the same two characters? It's always the same two characters. Okay, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's actually an incredible like, that sounds good. industrial complex that he's created. Yeah, he's yeah, got like yeah. a team of like 10 editors. They edit in like very meme style stuff. Oh, okay, like okay. Jeffrey is like troll, the green troll fancy oh, okay, type yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, Adonis yeah. is like the Ch Giga Chad. Yeah, Giga Chad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, And yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. The, the editing is incredible with <laughs> all of, all yeah, of these yeah. things. And yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's really well done. Yeah. I think in the, in the industrial complex of like, life advice, motivational speaking, you know, self-help. In in this whole industrial complex, um, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of theory crafting and analysis. And I think like, I think at, at, the, at the root, you actually do just need to like switch on the Giga Chad and just like, yeah, just like, do the David Goggins thing. <laughs> I don't. I don't I, think at the root you do. I think at the margin you do. What, wait. What do you mean by that? So I think 
this, so this is where I personally <coughs> disagree with David Goggins. Sorry, David, if you're listening to this, I love you, man. But <laughs> um, I think that the narrative of you got to kind of put yourself through pressure and become a diamond on the other side and like discipline and all that kind of stuff. <coughs> I think that that is actually broadly unsustainable for most people and is not generally, I think, a fun way to live life. Like Muhammad Ali has this famous phrase of like, you know, I hated every minute of training, but I did it because it was worth it 10 years later to become a champion. Yeah. It's like, was it really? Like, right. I, I, don't, I don't know about it. I, I think most people, if you ask them, would you like to suffer for every day for 10, 10 years and then you'll be a champion at the end of it? would probably be like, eh. But and, you know, I, I don't take it think leave that's it. like the situation most people are in. I don't think most people are like in in this, in, in a thing where like, they need to actively suffer for 10 years to like reap the rewards of something. I think the focus on discipline is gets you into that kind of mode. Whereas, whereas I mean, I'm not, I'm not knocking discipline. Um, I think it's important, but I think it is more sustainable and more enjoyable to use discipline in small doses when, when necessary. Yeah. Rather than to have it as like the core. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I for Gogan, like, it's like the core. You shouldn't, yeah. you shouldn't have to like force yourself to do like all the things you're doing. But there are definitely like a bunch of moments where like you you just need to switch on the giga chad, stop being a little bitch, and just like do do like this, the next step of something, or like get out of bed at four a.m. or whatever it might be. Sure. Uh, again, I I agree. I think there are lots of things that you can do before you get to the point where you where you have to force yourself. But there there always comes a point where you have to put in a bit of a, a bit of activation energy to get started. It's just, but it's, it's, even, it's even simple things. It's like, I think that kind of like, let's say someone wakes up and is like, okay, I'm going to go for a run today or whatever. The uh, kind of, I think over-indexing on the Goggins method is like, right, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bitch. I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop being a little bitch and I'm just going to go for a run. <laughs> Alternatively, what you could do is you could be like, huh, this thing, you know, going for a run, why does it feel so like aversive to me? Let me actually fig figure out what's going on here. Mm. It's like, okay, well, firstly, I actually don't know where I'm going to go for a run. So I have some level of uncertainty and uncertainty leads mm. to procrastination. Secondly, I do have actually a little bit of anxiety because I'm like out of shape and like overweight and stuff. And yeah. I'm a bit concerned people are going to be like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then, all right, all right cool. Well, I can't, I can't like solve the anxiety and stuff overnight, but I can definitely make a plan. Okay, cool. And now all of a sudden, like the going for a run, it's, it's no longer like an enormous burst of discipline or motivation and yeah. willpower that you need to make it happen. Just like a small amount because you've done the, you've done the setup work, you've done the prep work. Yeah, yeah. And the prep work is a lot easier to do. Yeah, than that's, fair, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'm on board with that. I'm all about discipline, but I think it's a unsustainable strategy when relied upon and should be used as like in small doses to get over small hurdles. Yeah. yeah. And systemic things like actually enjoying the thing that you're doing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Finding a way sure, to make running sure. fun yeah. will be 98% of the problem for the vast majority of people. Yeah, yeah. Because I think most people don't want to be <coughs> suffering yeah. in their day-to-day -day yeah, life. Yeah, 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 for sure, but for sure, for sure. Yeah, it's a book deadline in about 10 days, so it's like really crunch time to make it all happen. That's why you said the deadline was a couple of weeks ago. There's there's various different deadlines. <laughs> there's various different deadlines on the book journey. Um, okay. This is the deadline for the second draft to hand to the editors oh, at the publishing okay. house, and then they're going to hand it in back within two weeks, and then there's going to be another deadline three weeks from that to be oh, like, really right. get these changes out and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all this kind of stuff going on. So, Do you feel like it's getting there? I feel like it is getting there, yeah. Nice. Are you proud of it? Not yet, but I feel like I will be proud of it by the time I'm through with it. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's it's like a month ago, I was like, oh my God, this is so bad. Yeah. A month later, I'm like, okay, this is actually not too bad. Mm. It still could do with lots of work, but it's 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 not it's not horrendous right now. Yeah. And it's like, just want to get it to a point where I'm like, actually, you know what? This is this is reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's what Cal Newport says. This book just needs to be reasonable. The next one is going to be good. <laughs> Yeah, when do when will it be published? I think maybe September. In twenty twenty three. Yeah. No, it's that's not too far away now. It's not too far away, yeah. Are you gonna go on a book tour? Yeah, of course. Promote mate. it. Of course, mate. I'm gonna do signings and stuff in bookshops where no one's gonna rock up. Oh. Is, uh, why would no one rock up? Did you see the, the the there was a whole tweet thread about this, um tweet chain about this like very recently, where some random are tweeted that like I would just publish my first book, went to a signing, one person showed up and it was my mum or something like that. And but then like, like this is guy famous. No, just like a random person. And then like this oh, su suddenly went viral and people like Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett and like these like ridiculous, is Terry Pratchett still alive? Like, or, or maybe someone was telling a story about him. All of these like big name authors were like, 
yeah, like two months ago, I went to a signing, two people showed up. Like, oh, really? And it's like, you know, pe- pe- people at the level of like yeah, yeah, yeah. authors you yeah, recognize. Yeah. And then it was Stephen like a really wholesome, like Stephen King was like, yeah, I, t- I turned up to a signing. Like there was like one person there and it was like the cleaner. And mm. so he and I had a good chat, like no one rocked up yeah. <laughs> and then things like that. Um, so it's, it's, it's very much a thing, but it was quite yeah. wholesome that, that people were weighing in on, on those sorts of experiences. Mm. Yeah, book tour. But I do think that like, <clears throat> I think the IRL internet scene of like you know like if logan paul does something irl or whatever i think there is definitely a culture of like oh man like my favorite youtuber is like doing this irl thing oh my god it's in my city like of course i'm going to go to this mm. whereas like i think there's less of a culture of like i don't know i might be wrong here but like oh i'm really into like sci-fi books and my author guy is doing this thing in my city <laughs> I, I don't know like would you even hear about it because he's not you're not like watching you're not like yeah. consuming Neil Gaiman content every day. <coughs> no. You're consuming Ali Abdal content every day. It's like, oh yeah, yeah shit. That's nice. a good point. Yeah. I think someone like Brian Sanderson does a really good job of being online and oh, having a YouTube okay. channel like, yeah, like an yeah. email list and stuff. So yeah, yeah. If Brian is another, I'd be like, yeah. right, freaking let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't hear about that from anyone else because they don't, don't really do social media properly. Yeah. All right, I have a hard stop in four minutes, but I'm quite keen to read some comments from our previous video. Oh yeah. Do you want to, are you going to do a public apology? Um, yeah, I'd like to publicly apologize for the poor... Uh, last three episodes where we were basically reading I was basically reading from a book I'll read out some comments about it um, uh, so yeah some of them were like nicer than others Dr. Mustafa Sultan says having said that these past three book episodes have been pretty tough to get through some unsolicited thoughts preamble is way more interesting you two live super interesting lives and vicariously hearing about challenges and what's going well is interesting Book episodes work best when you guys riff off two or three big ideas as opposed to going line by line. Yeah, that's a really good point. And he likes the new camera angles. Pretty good. Nice. Someone's, <coughs> someone called Sickle Cell with Dr. O says, please no more Love Hurts episodes and reading from books. <laughs> the conversations sound too technical and less free-flowing. Someone else says the book summary thing would be much better received if it was just one episode. Wait, there was a really funny one. So someone said, it's taxing for you, Ali. It's torture for us. <laughs> <laughs> Reply, I agree, three videos for one book. That is a bore. <laughs> yep. Look, I'm sorry. I just want, I, I apologize. We won't do that again. Nice. I'll be more prepared about books if we do want to talk about them. Yep. All right. Good stuff. All right. Thank you for listening, everyone. Catch you later. <laughs>